Gold is the most polarizing investment asset around at the moment. People will either smile knowingly or gasp in disbelief if you mention that you're considering buying gold. The reality is that gold is simply another investment option that you should consider carefully. Gold can serve many purposes as part of your wealth building strategy. That's why all sorts of people own it. Hedge fund managers, self-made billionaires, movie stars, recluses, conspiracy theorists, even central banks and governments. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are, how interested you are in the world of investing, or what you expect from your financial future. You should at least consider gold as part of your strategy to increase and protect your wealth, simply because it serves so many purposes. People who love gold will tell you this about it. Gold is a store of value. Gold is insurance against a fragile financial system. Gold is real money. I believe that each of these features make gold an important part of any astute investment portfolio. Still, like I say, gold is polarizing. Not everyone loves it. Some economists will tell you that gold has no purpose, that gold costs money to store, that it doesn't pay a yield. To make any sort of return, they say you need to have your money invested in gold for years, decades even. If that's not enough to put you off buying gold, they scream that gold is a relic from a bygone era, a time when markets weren't electronic, when gold belonged to insular countries, nations and economies that didn't operate in anything like today's interconnected global environment. Yet, in my view, these are the exact reasons why you should own gold. In fact, in today's debt riddled marketplace, I believe everyone should consider buying and holding some gold. The modern economy that shuns gold is based on nothing more than faith in governments and central banks to keep the value of paper money steady. Yet, it wasn't always this way. Gold was the epicenter of the monetary system for over 3,000 years. It was only 40 years ago that the world was taken off the gold standard to be replaced by what's known as fiat currency. In other words, paper money. But historically, Gold is how families retained and passed on wealth from generation to generation. In times of market panic, the price of gold rose. When inflation took hold, the purchasing power of gold remained. When deflation spread, the purchasing power of gold still remained. Our ancestors were very wise. But these days, we've disconnected ourselves from money. We have more faith in digital zeros than physical metals. And that brings me to another reason for owning gold, to avoid something called counterparty risk. Counterparty risk is when someone else, such as a bank, broker or government, guarantees the value of something. Paper money is based on a government's guarantee that it can be exchanged for goods and services in the economy. But when a government fails or people lose faith in the government, faith can also be lost in the value of that government's money. In recent times, the Zimbabwean dollar, the Russian ruble and the Argentine peso have all suffered a loss of faith in the currency to the point where no one would accept it as payment. According to a study of 775 fiat currencies by dollardays.org, the average life expectancy of a fiat or paper currency is 27 years. 20% of these currencies failed through hyperinflation. 21% were destroyed by war. 12% were destroyed by independence, 24% were reformed, and 23% are still in circulation, but approaching one of the other outcomes. Given the undeniable track record of currencies, it is clear that on a long enough timeline, the survival rate of all fiat currencies drops to zero. But gold does not have this problem. It is the only financial asset that is not someone else's liability.